In the two-dimensional world of small screen stars, it's rare to find one who's got the brains to back up all that brawn. But for multitasking master Mountie Paul Gross, playing the lead is only just the beginning. So while Constable Fraser got ready to wrap his third successful season on the air and on the case, we sent Christine Diakos on set to finally give this renaissance man his due. Do you believe it? This is his job. They actually pay people to do this in Canada. There's a lot more to that perfectly pressed uniform than meets the eye. Paul Gross is a playwright, a country crooner, and a high-intensity TV producer. So when I headed to the set of Due South, I wasn't just excited about getting up close and personal with TV's prettiest boy. I wanted to get the full Mountie. The heavens above miss nothing. <laughs> the musician in you, the writer in you, the actor in you, the executive producer in you, I mean, there's, there's many hats you wear. If you had to sort of narrow it down to what you truly are as an artist, what would you say is your finest point? If I were to put the question differently, if I had a choice of death or just choosing one of those things, or had to lose everything but one, I'd probably lose everything but writing. And that's really where you can, where it's before anybody gets their fingers in it, you're just kind of inventing scenes and inventing characters. That's really a lot of fun. Inventing scenes and characters was how Paul Gross first made his mark in Canada. He worked as a writer in residence at Stratford, workshopping a number of scripts for the stage before moving on to television movies like 1992's Gross Misconduct, directed by Adam Agoyan. In the meantime, Gross was conducting a promising acting career on stage and screen. But you tell these people they can't fish, you might as well stick a gun to their heads. Well, they have just put a noose around Dexter's neck. Well, maybe I shouldn't have stopped them. Which in 1994 led him straight into the arms of the law. Due South, created by the Canadian brains behind 30-something, Paul Haggis, was heralded as the Great White North's first ever regular primetime export to Hollywood. The show's unforgettable lead character made an instant hero out of Constable Benton Fraser and gave Gross the chance to flex both his acting and writing muscles. In fact, it's his vision that has created some of the most memorable episodes, including this year's season finale, Mountie on the Bounty. Well, it's a huge production. We were out there on in the middle of Lake Ontario on a freighter and being chased by the, uh, the original bounty ship that was used in Butany on the Bounty, and it was just grand. It was also a chance for Gross to trade in his Stetson for a Southwester and scratch another of his artistic itches when he penned 32 down on the Robert McKenzie, which was featured on Paul's indie CD, Two Houses, with collaborator David Keeley. 32 down on the Robert McKenzie. How long has music been a passion? All your life? I mean, when did you finally say, I'm going to, like, sit down with David Keeley and write this and do it? Well, actually, we started doing demos. We were going to go get a writing deal in Nashville. We went down and kind of shopped them around, and a couple places we were going to do a publishing deal with us, so we'd have to write, you know, 10 songs a year or something. And then on the way home, we sort of said, well, why don't we just do these ourselves? <laughs> so, do you think you're think a good I'm, singer? I don't think I'm a particularly good singer, so I have to write songs that kind of don't expose that. <laughs> No real high arching ballads, just kind of grumbly songs. While Paul might not have high hopes for winning a Juno, he's already won two Best Actor Geminis for Due South. Not to mention the title of Canada's sexiest leading man. All the fan mail that I get, all anybody ever wants to know is, what's it like to kiss Paul Gross? I mean, that's... Then it's great. <laughs> but Gross almost hung up his Stetson for good last year when Haggis, his ex-producer, offered him the starring role in the American drama Easy Street. But he turned down that chance to head due south for a chance to head up due south. The struggling show had been out of production and in search of new leadership for over a year before its Canadian studio alliance finally got their man. What is wrong with you? Why can't you just leave this thing alone? It's not in my nature. I had no idea what was involved. I had never seen a budget. But I remember being one, one day at post-production meeting and the guy from head of post-production alliance said, OK, well, if we, we'll still do the offline here. We can do the online here. And I said, well, hang on a second. What is, what's offline? I had no idea what the difference between offline and online were, which apparently is ABCs of post-production. So the guy says, oh, my god, you don't know that. And the whole, you could feel the whole place just going, oh, god, <laughs> this is sinking. 
with the careful direction of the writer, executive producer, and star, Due South proved unsinkable. He not only kept the series afloat, but with the addition of cute bad boy Callum Keith Rennie as his new partner, made it more popular than ever. I call him Tank Commander. If something has to be done, it may not, it may be unpleasant to him, but he's going to do it. If he creates a great respect. As a matter of fact, I think it's done him a lot of good. I think it's, it's kind of um, the first thing you think is that it's a tremendous, tremendously difficult, and of course it is. But along with that, there's that sense of um, I'm in charge. I don't have to sit and wait for other people to decide for me where things should be. And then, as I turn to reach for the door, then we ramp. Everything back in again. Okay. And while both Paul Gross and Due South have gained enormous respect within the Canadian television industry, the series shot its final episode, which will air next spring. So even though diehard fans have 13 more episodes to look forward to next year, after five seasons, two cancellations, and two renewals, it seems that even the man beneath the Mountie thinks it's time to turn in his uniform. I've been doing it for a long time, and I think it may well be time to go and do something else. I just get to a point where partly as an actor where I think, well, I'm not really sure what can happen to him now that hasn't already been explored. And then as a writer or a producer, I think I'm not really sure how many more stories can be told. You didn't think they'd let you get away with it, did you? It's been a great ride. Even though Gross and the gang are talking like this is the end for Due South, word has it that the sets have been safely stored, just in case Canada's favorite Mountie rides again.